So that was a 180 degree turn. Oh, it certainly was. Uh, all of a sudden, uh, the World War became the War of the Proletarian when Germany marched in on the Soviet Union. Prior to that, it was just a capitalist war. You know, it's hard to think back of those days to realize how intense they were. Now, uh, jumping around another point, I remember one on the matter of endorsement for candidates. This was not done nationally just by Walter Ruth and the board. I recall the one meeting I forget where it was in Detroit, where there were voting machines, hundreds if not thousands of delegates came and actually voted individually. Do you recall that meeting? No. Uh, what the, what uh, year would that have been? Uh, I'm trying to think. When, I think possibly it was 46 or 48, but the individuals met and then debated who to endorse and then went up secretly and each voted on a voting machine mm -hmm. and cast a vote so it wasn't Walter or the board saying, here's who we endorse. Well, this has always been the case. Uh, I, was, I was back east probably at that time, so I was not in the Detroit area at the time. Yeah. Uh, also, you want to go into a little more of the relation uh, with the Democratic Party, particularly in Michigan, as far as old Governor Williams goes, and then there were Many UAW members in the legislature, Joe Kowalski was speaker, Ed Carey, Jack Fuller, I don't know if those names are familiar with oh, you. Oh, of course they are. Yes. Uh, Joe, of course, was a member of the staff of the UAW before he ran for the state legislature, Joe Kowalski. Mm -hmm. um, all of us had, uh, b became activists in the, in the political life of the community. Uh, when I was back east, I was, I was active then when we moved to Detroit, obviously I became active in Michigan, and frankly, every staff member uh, felt a responsibility to be, to be an activist on the political front and the legislative front. Um, so that it, it was a matter of getting out to the local unions and not only talking about the contract and its provisions and negotiations, but also talking about the basic social problems and which party stood for what and which candidate stood for what so that uh, just as all the other staff people were that much concerned, I was as well and was uh, actively engaged in, in election campaigns, including doorbell ringing on election day. How about running for precinct delegates? Was there much activity there? Yes, all of us, uh, not all of us, I shouldn't say that, but many of us ran for precinct delegate. Okay. I did and was a precinct delegate for a period of time. Do you remember the district you were elected from? We lived downtown yeah. in, uh, on, on St. Auburn, which is uh, right, uh, well, it's right in the downtown area, not far from Rensen. Yeah. There are a few other questions here. Now, <clears throat> at this period, there was a very good working relationship, say, with labor unions, not only the UAW, but many of the other la labor unions, uh, women's groups, ethnic groups, racial groups, ecology groups, a uh, whole broad umbrella. Uh, what's happened to that in the last uh, year, say the last, last November election? There are a lot of books written. What's your feeling? Let me put it this way. Um, in my own judgment, uh, the labor movement has not done a sufficiently good educational job with regard to its own members in the political scene. And as a result, we have seen uh, a floating away in many respects of what the labor movement advocates in politics and legislative matters. Uh, one of my experiences this past election campaign brought it home to me. Um, I was a speaker at a luncheon in behalf of uh, Sandra Levin there were some over 900 people at the luncheon, mostly UAW folks. And uh, I spoke on behalf of Levin because he was unable to come in from Washington for it. The response was excellent, but then afterward, about a dozen of the members came up to uh, speak to me, telling me that they would, under no circumstances, vote for Sandra Levin. I said, my God, why not? You, you, you'll rarely find a fellow who, a, a congressman, who is as committed to labor's cause and workers' causes as, uh, as uh, Sander is. So why wouldn't you vote for him? 
Well, they told me, because he voted for the anti-crime bill and we can't buy assault weapons. Now, it's true these came primarily from Macomb County, but there's, there seems to be the need for a very expansive and vigorous educational drive to let members understand and appreciate why the union's position is so-and-so and what it means to them personally in terms of their, their life, uh, their, uh, and, and of course their li their, their, their what, what they can anticipate for themselves and their children and their grandchildren within the framework of the union movement. Uh, I think a lot more has to be done in this regard. Do you see a coalition of, say, the NRA, the religious right, uh, other groups like that, and driving a wage, affirmative, uh, anti-affirmative action, uh, kind of an unofficial a political coalition of that type taking place? I don't know if we could say there's an outright coalition. I don't know personally, for instance, uh, what kinds of meetings, if any, are taking place between the extreme right wing and uh, the NRA folks. But the fact is, is that the issues uh, which they support are such that they have a, a so-called common enemy, and the common enemy are those who have a, a deeper social vision uh, for the economy as a whole, for society as a whole, and they relate themselves to single issues like assault weapons uh, in, the, in the people who support the NRA. Uh, the fact is that they have grown in significance politically within the nation, which is evident by the last election last November and what's happening in Congress currently. Uh, what's needed in my judgment and, and what has to be done is a mobilization of those forces which say, uh-uh, that's not what America stands for. That's not where we ought to go. It doesn't mean they're wrong about everything, but the general tenor of what they stand for is designed, in effect, to bring values of greed, I want for me, uh, rather than for society as a whole, and uh, also those values which have to do with making the rich richer. Now, you and I remember the 100 days under FDR. Yes. Uh, a lot of people don't. Now, what do you think of the comparison of the 100 days in the present Congress to equate that with the 100 days under FDR? If I were looking for exact opposites, I guess I could, uh, I could put it in those terms. What FDR did in the first 100 days was to respond to the Hoover period, the uh, growth of the Deep Depression, and the fact that people were, were, were hurting, they were starving, there were no jobs available. Uh, everything was going to pot in the nation. And so his response was, as a nation and as a people, we have an obligation to all of us, not just to a few. Today, we find pretty much the opposite occurring because what's happening in my judgment in Congress today with the contract for America, or contract on America, if you want to call it that one, um, is looking at those who need it most and saying it's your fault. Uh, I'm, I'm appalled, for instance, when they say that these children should not have lunches at school, that uh, we're going to eliminate welfare because there are those who take advantage of it, which means that millions of people who are not taking advantage of it, but who actually need it because there are no jobs available for them or they haven't been trained for jobs, uh, will lose out. And uh, I, I, have, I have that feeling that what we, are, what we are losing is, I guess, what the Bible talks about. And that is, we want to be treated or we should be treated. We should treat others as we want to be treated. Help thy neighbor. Be a good citizen. And it's more than just looking out for oneself and saying you're no good. I want to show you a headline here. I don't know if we can zero in on that. This says tax bill could mean a windfall for the well-off. Can you guess what publication that came from? I see it's the Wall Street Journal. Quite unusual. Well, uh, that is really surprising. That is a contrast from the 100 days of F. 